Welcome to another edition of Computer Train. In today's show, I'm going to review some of the tips that I was giving you to select a computer and some other devices. We're going to look at some uh, printing today. So I've got my pointer ready, pull up a chair, and let's get started. It's time for Computer Train, the weekly TV program that trains you how to use your computer with your host, El Paso Community College faculty member, Russ Myers. In the previous episode of Computer Train, what I was trying to show you is how to make some decisions when you purchase a computer, quote unquote. There are so many choices now, sometimes it's kind of mind boggling. And one of the first things I did was I tried to get you to understand about what it is that you're going to need this device for. Are we just a casual user? Are we someone who's really intensive? So I'm going to pick up at that point and kind of review the three categories of people I was talking about. And then I'm going to discuss some other things that I didn't have time to in the previous show. So first of all, a quick review of what I was talking about last time. What we want to try to do first of all is decide what kind of computer user we are. So I started off the show talking about most of you are most likely casual users. You might do some things on the internet, you might uh, play games a little bit, you might Facebook, you might send email, uh, not too much intensive users. Okay, and then there was the category that I'm kind of in is obviously I still have a job, I teach at the college, I do uh, a lot of side jobs once in a while. So I'm more of a worker with a computer. I, I view a computer and the device more as a work machine as opposed to an entertainment machine. And again, with uh, computers that I have, I can kind of do both obviously because I have a little higher end computer. And then kind of a side category that a lot of people are getting into is we have the gamers. Okay, so those are people that are going to use uh, high intensity graphic games. They usually play in a community uh, against each other. So they're going to need a really high end fast computer. So again, you want to kind of decide where is it that you fall into these and that will help you make some decisions as you go looking for different types of devices. Okay, so let's continue from that point and discuss some other things. All right, so one of the things that's nice for casual users is of course smartphones now. Uh, smartphones have just about everything we need to, like a tablet, so now smartphones actually can do some of the work that we need. It's not necessarily some of the things I need to do, but of course it can get on the internet, you can play games with your phones, um, you can email, you can text, you can do a lot of things with your phones. Two big brands that I was talking about were uh, Samsung and Apple, and as you can see, I tried to pick some snapshots where the phones are actually in someone's hands because the phones are starting to get larger and larger as we kind of meld the different worlds where we have a tablet and a phone. And this is one of the words that I had brought up in a previous episode, and I'm going to review that again. And that is the term phablet. Okay, I did a little uh, word trivia a couple of shows ago about some computer terms. So here we have the smartphones when they first came out, and then here we have a tablet. So a phablet is where we have the phone capabilities, but they are getting larger and larger. Uh, the new Samsung Note, that's a very large, my friend has that, and I'm always worried about putting, even, can you even put it in your pocket and take it anywhere? Uh, the phone that I have, which I bought a few years ago, which actually at that time was a pretty decent, good sized phone, is now it looks almost microscopic compared to some of these others. So where's that going to head, you know, as the technology rolls around? What's next for us in this smartphone phablet environment? Okay, that's where we're headed right there. You see the size of that baby? Just joking around about that. I don't know where it's headed, but uh, people are demanding more and more use from their uh, smartphones. And in order to do some of the things, obviously we're going to need a screen uh, to do those. So they're going to start getting larger and larger, I imagine. All right, so now we kind of picked a device. Uh, I'm going to discuss some things about some printers, some very basic technology. I'm going to talk a little bit about pricing. I'm gonna actually, I have a printer on my desk here, and one of the things I really want to show you is how easy it is to connect printers as opposed to how it used to be. Okay, so the basics of printers, first of all, most common are inkjets. Okay, inkjets, they're very inexpensive. The only thing about inkjets um, is the cartridges, of course, can be expensive. I remember that uh, a few years ago I bought one inkjet printer and that device used to eat through those cartridges like crazy. I ended up giving it away. And now I purchased another one after a little bit of research. It's a very fast printer and it doesn't go through the print cartridges nearly as fast as that other one did. So you got to do some research on that. But what I also wanted to show you that a lot of home users didn't used to in the past, and that's laser jet printers. 
Laser jet, one of the things you want to remember, at least in the inexpensive category, is they're mostly for black and white printing. So 95% of what I need to do is I'm printing documents. I just need black and white. Once in a while, I'm going to print something in color. Sometimes my children are working on some projects, and they're going to print in color. So I have a separate printer for that. But the majority of the work I need to do is documents. And so I want something that's going to print relatively quickly. Laser jets, in general, are faster than inkjet printers. They are a bit more expensive, but the new ones uh, for home users, you can actually find a decently priced one, which is the one that I have on my desk here, uh, $100 or less. And they're really nice workhorses that will really, you know, crank out some documents for you relatively quickly. Okay, so this is the key that I like this printer for. It's faster than an inkjet printer uh, in general. And I'm going to show you that in a second. All right, so what are some other things that I might think about as I do this? Okay, and this is a big one for most people is photo printing. A lot of people take their flash drives or their cameras and they go down to Walgreens and you pay for it there. There's really uh, no reason to do that. You can get a very high quality photo printer at home. Most of the new ones will allow you to connect your camera directly to the printer without having to even go through the computer. The software that you need to do the printing is right on the device itself. And then one other thing that you might think about is some of them, we call them all-in-ones, which means it has a scanner as well as printing capabilities. And that's where we can scan previous photos. I read an interesting article uh, recently that's kind of moved me to do some more scanning is that now we don't have printed pictures anymore. Most of our pictures are on our smartphones or our cameras in a storage type device uh, that we've talked about in other shows. And one of the things it was talking about is as technology moves along and the devices start changing and changing and new technology comes, we might end up with all of these uh, files on our devices and no way of printing them because we don't have a device from that time frame. So what I'm trying to do is think about those things and I'm using my scanner to kind of scan some old photos um, and print them if I need to or save them in another format. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to show you um, how to connect a printer as opposed to it uh, how it was in the uh, old time. I say old time like I'm 100 years old. But one of the major considerations that you had to worry about when you connected devices to a computer uh, that I've talked about in a previous show is something called device drivers. Device drivers are files that the operating system needs to communicate with that particular device. It doesn't automatically work. It has to have files basically like a translator. In Previous technology, usually your device came with a CD and you had to have that CD. If you took that printer to another device, you had to install those dr device drivers. Sometimes people would get a printer or a device from somebody, they just gave it to them, but they didn't have the software. Then you would have to search on the internet, go to the manufacturer of that device, download the device drivers, which most people did not really know how to do. But what's nice now is a lot of devices, including this printer that I have, the files that you need to install on the operating system come with the device. It's actually on the device. There's no CD or anything, so I want to show you how easy it is to do that. First of all, as we've discussed in other shows, most devices now plug in through the USB, just like your flash drive. Okay, so I'm going to simply plug in this uh, printer into one of my available USB ports. That's another important topic to think about when you pick a device. Um, the thing about tablets is usually they don't have a USB port to plug things in. So I want a device that has uh, a port, and then I'm also going to show you, if it's not a desktop, how do I get multi-ports, and we're gonna, I'm going to show you a picture of a hub in a moment. All right, so all I need to do is find an available port. So looking at here in the back of my uh, computer, I have an available port there, and I'm just going to plug it in like I would plug in a flash drive. All right, so now we have it plugged into the USB, and you can see how easy that is. Uh, it also brings up an interesting article that I had read recently about, again, technology and USBs. Is right now, sometimes, you know, you always have to look at your USB to see if it's upside down, which way to plug it in. Uh, the newer technology USBs, you're going to be able to plug it in either way. It's going to have kind of these readers on both sides, so you can just pop it in either way and it's going to read it, which would really be nice because I do that uh, all the time, probably like you do. Now, once we have it plugged in, we still have to install the device drivers or the files that the operating system needs to read it. So we're going to be running uh, File Explorer. 
Remember to do that on all programs of uh, Windows going way, way back. It's the Win key and the E. All right, so after we plug it in and we come here to File Explorer, we're going to click on this PC. Remember, if you have a previous uh, edition of Windows, that's going to say computer or my computer. Uh, but that Windows logo E will run your File Explorer on any version of Windows going many, many years back. Okay, so if we look at the drives, you're going to look at the one that relates to your device. Okay, so here's my, I have an HP printer. So I'm going to open that up. Okay, and all we have to do is run this setup utility. Okay, so I'm going to run that setup utility. It takes a couple of seconds. Uh, I'm probably going to cut the time so that we can do some other things on the show. But the point of the whole thing is I no longer need the CD. The files that I need are coming straight from the device, which is really nice. Okay, so it's going to take a couple of seconds to install it. I don't know, we, we don't want to wait for the whole thing, right? We'll just wait a couple seconds. This is kind of a, a good dialog box, so I'll pick up from there. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. All right, one of the other uh, considerations here, and you might think about that when you uh, buy a printer, is does it have wireless capability? That's a really nice feature so that, you know, if you have your laptop, you can be working in your living room or doing something in another part of your house and then send your files to the printer. I don't have this one hooked up like that because, you know, we just have this little studio. So I'm going to say configure to print using USB. So I'm doing it through USB connection. But the printer that I purchased does have wireless capabilities. So at my house, it is set up like that. So I'll pick the USB option. All right, to save a little time, I'm not going to register my product. Uh, registration is something you want to do, especially for warranty purposes, if something goes wrong with your device. And I'm not going to print a test page. I'm actually going to print something to show you how fast these printers are. So I'm going to take those off. Okay, this is to set it up to print actually through devices. So, now it's completely installed and I, I can use it. Um, so, if I were to take this printer just like I did here, if I take it to the next office, you do need to install files. So, whatever computer you're using, those files, those device drivers must be on that machine. But now I don't have to have the CD, I don't have to go to the internet and find it in some manufacturer's website, download the files and then run them. They're going to be directly on there and all I have to do is click on that setup. Really nice. Okay, so here's an example of a, a syllabus that I have from one of my classes. It's uh, actually eight pages long. If you take a class here at Community and you just want to grade, next window. But if you want to learn something, you've come to the right place if you take one of my classes. But there's a lot of information that I'm going to give you. Okay, so I'm going to go here to File. There we go. And then I'm going to come down to Print. Okay, here's a very important thing that you want to do. Um, when you have a computer, there's always going to be a default printer. Since I just installed this, it doesn't automatically set up as the default, and I'm going to show you how, to, how easy that is to do. Uh, so right now, when I go into an application, it's actually pointing to another device. So you need to make sure you check where it's going to print. And then once you set that device as the default, every single program that you go to, when you go to print, it will be pointing that device. But right now, it's not pointing to that. So if you see printer here, 
it's not printing to the device that I just installed. It's very simple to change. It's just a lot of times people forget to do that, especially if they're using someone else's computer. Okay, so there's my laser jet. All right. Mark, get set, go. Let's see how fast it takes to print eight pages. Abracadabra. There we go. First time through, it's always going to take a second. Okay, notice how quiet it is. Okay, so we're already on the fourth sheet. It's almost done. Very, very fast. Um, I have an inkjet printer before I had this one, which was pretty fast, I thought, but this one is much faster. And the thing that I really like about it is super quiet. Okay? Eight pages took, I don't know, 15 seconds. So if you're going to do the vast majority of your printing, I would really look into a laser jet printer. They used to be, you know, cost uh, for the average user, they were too much cost. People get in their mind about laser jet. Oh, that's the one at work that's about, you know, three feet tall and three feet wide. Now you can see the technology has come a long way and it's available for home users. Uh, I looked at some on Amazon, $100 or less. And the vast majority of my printing is in black and white. So I have one of those. And then, of course, I do have a, a printer that allows scanning and photos also. All right, so with that, I want to show you how to set this up so that every program that I go to, this would be my default printer if this is my device. Um, remember how to do a search on a computer. I mean, don't forget that I'm in the Windows 8 uh, environment. To get to the Charms toolbar, it was Windows Logo C, but you can also have a couple more shortcuts to get to things directly. Windows Logo F opened up the Find, uh, but the find, the default is open files. So if you do Windows logo S, it will open up the charms bar and take you straight to the find where you can find anything. Okay, so I'm going to do Windows logo S. And you can see it opens up that search utility. And instead of the default searching for files, which is the Windows uh, Win key F, it's going to search for everywhere. And this is kind of the thing that only a few people used to know that really worked with computers, how to set the system properties. Now with Windows 8, it's very simple. I'm just going to type in the word printer, okay? And it's going to show me everything that relates to printers. So in this list, right off the bat, here's where I can set some things related to devices. Remember, another term for hardware was peripheral devices. Uh, that's about 50 shows ago, but we did talk about that. Okay, and printers. So I'm going to go to that. Okay, so if we look down here, here are the different types of devices, at least related to this computer. And then we have the one that I just installed, the HP LaserJet. All you have to do is point to it and right click. And what you want to do is you want to put a check mark on set as default. Okay, so if we click on default, now every program we go to, if we printed from Internet Explorer, if we printed from Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, that would be the default printer that would be showing in the window. And then if you did not want to print to that one, you wanted to print to something else, then in that particular print dialog box, you would change that particular printer. So really easy to do it now. It wasn't that hard before, but it's kind of those things that you had to have some computer skills to really do it. Now it's what we call plug and play. You plug it in and it's almost ready to go right off the bat. All right, what else do we got here? One of the things that I wanted to show you also was, uh, I, just dis I just discussed this a second ago, look for a wireless option. Uh, that's really nice so you can print at your house. Okay, and this is really important because remember, one of the nice things that I need as a worker is I need USB. I store all my files on my flash drive. There is cloud storage, which I've discussed in the past, but for me, going everywhere and using different computers, I take my files with me on a flash drive, so I need a USB port. Some of the devices, like tablets and things like that, they don't have USB ports. So once again, those devices to me are not work computers. Those are more entertainment, casual user. But if you buy one of those uh, light laptops that I had discussed in the previous show, usually those might come with only one or two USB ports. 
Right now, I have about four or five different things plugged into this computer through USB. I have my flash drive, I have this printer, I have the mouse and the keyboard, I have a remote mouse, I have a lot of things connected, and I wouldn't be able to plug in all of those USB devices if I just had a couple of ports. So what you can get is basically kind of like a, a socket um, where we have multiple sockets and we only have one. So we plug in one device through USB, and then this one actually has one, two, three, four different ports. Okay, so you can take those uh, devices that only have maybe one or two USBs and ex expand the capabilities. And that's what I do because I, ha I want a lightweight uh, laptop because I'm going to go place to place and work. All right, so that pretty much wraps up the things I was talking about related to PCs and how to select some different things. All starts off with who you are. Uh, this just happened this week, and, and that's what I've been trying to do in the last couple of shows. Almost every day, every other day, at least every week, somebody comes to me with some kind of issue that they're trying to figure out, and I help them. And the more interesting ones I might bring to the show, and that's what I want to do on this time. Um, and this one happens to be a friend of mine. He's a uh, Sunday school teacher, and he was doing some research on the Internet, getting some text, and, and building uh, a document he was going to hand out. Uh, he teaches, I think... 10th through 12th grade, something like that, um, at Sunday school. So I did my good deed of the week. I'm, I'm hoping when I go golfing this weekend, uh, there'll be some divine intervention for me on the golf course. Okay, so what's, what happened here is when we get the research, so I just brought up um, a, a page, and it usually happens when you're getting information from PDF files. I've discussed different file types on the internet before. PDF is one of the most common file types for text-based documents. Okay, so what happens is when we grab that text from the PDF and we try to maybe copy and paste it into Word, when we put it into Word, it doesn't come out normally like it would be printing. Okay, so I'm going to open up one of these uh, files here that are PDF. So I'll click on this download and we'll open that up. Okay, so that's what he did. He found some information on the internet in a PDF file. He wanted to use some of that information in his lesson plan that day for uh, the Sunday school. So he copied some of the text. So this is just a standard copy and paste, and he was copying and pasting into a Microsoft Word document. But I want to show you what happens when you do that. So I'm going to select this paragraph, and I'm going to copy it. Okay, and then we're going to open up Microsoft Word, and I'm going to search for that real quickly. I thought I had put it on my taskbar, but apparently I did not. Okay, so here in Microsoft Word, we're going to paste that information. So watch what happens. Okay, so the source that I came from was a perfectly written out paragraph, and then when I brought it in to use it in Microsoft Word, you can see how it's divided up every single word onto its own line. And here's the key. Remember in Microsoft Word, I showed about these non-printing characters that allow you to see why documents are formatted the way they are. So if I click on that, notice what we see here. Okay, so what Microsoft Word did is it put an Enter key, like someone pressed the Enter key. I don't know if you can zoom in just a little bit because it's very important about this character because in a second I'm going to show you how to fix it. Okay, so this basically is the new paragraph mark in Microsoft Word. So what he was trying to do, luckily before, uh, he didn't do it very long before he called me and said, is there a better way? He was clicking line by line and deleting that mark, then clicking, deleting, clicking, deleting, and of course, even this one paragraph would take 15, 20 minutes. You don't need to do that. Um, you can do a search and replace. Usually in Microsoft Word, we do a search and replace to search for certain text and replace it with other text, but it will also search for characters. Okay, so I'm going to select this text. The uh, search and replace is on the home ribbon over here on the far right. Okay, so if we want to look at that, it's over here. In Microsoft Word, uh, they came out with this new thing called the navigation pane. The find utility in almost all programs is the control F. That opens up find. 
but in Word, this new tool, the navigation pane, is Control F. Um, the search and replace is done very often, so I would remember that keyboard shortcut, which is Control H, uh, to do the replace. So let's open that up. Okay, pretty easy to use. I have shown you how to use this tool in previous episodes. Uh, usually it's used for text. You type the text that you're looking for, and then you tell Microsoft Word what to replace it with. But if you notice, there's a more option right here, and this is the option I need right now. In this more option down here, I'm going to click on special. Right down here, we can look for some special items. And one of the special items that we can look for, if you look at the tab, uh, sorry, at the top, is we can look for a paragraph mark. So I'm going to tell Microsoft Word to look for all these paragraph marks and replace it with a space. And then it's going to come right back to a normal looking document. Okay, so I'm going to click on that. Okay, so in the find what, this little code right here is for the enter key. Then I'm going to click down here in the replace with. And I'm just going to press my space bar. Okay, so now I'm going to tell it to replace all. If you already have other uh, information in your document, make sure that you select the exact uh, location where you want Microsoft Word to do the searching and replacing, or you could pretty much damage the whole document because it's going to look everywhere you've told it to. So I'm going to click on replace all. Okay, so we'll say yes. Notice it found it. It's going to go, and if I close this, there you go. Okay, so it found all of those enter keys and replaced it with a space, and now it's back to a normal looking document. Uh, and again, as opposed to taking 20, 25 minutes doing it manually, click, delete, click, delete, click, delete, um, I used search and replace and got it done. So I hope that pays off for me this weekend on the golf course. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the last two episodes. Make sure you determine what kind of computer user you are and get a little information. I gave you the fundamentals, but you got to get out there and do a little bit more research before you open up that wallet. I hope to see you next time here on Computer Train. <laughs>